In this presentation, we're going to take a look at custom reports, customizing reports, specifically looking at the grouping of certain reports, including the grouping of areas in the cost of goods sold into the categories of direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our job costing company dashboard. We're going to start off by opening up our favorite report or one of our favorite financial statement reports, that being the income statement. Let's go to the income statement this time. That's where the grouping of the cost of goods sold that we've been entering into the system has been uh, formatting within. So we're going to be having the date for 2020. And then we can see in the income statement, all the data we've been putting into has basically been going into the cost of goods sold account. So we've got the revenue cost of goods sold. Now we may further want to group this cost of goods sold uh, by, by the major groupings like direct materials, labor, and overhead. We talked about this briefly before, but I want to spend a little bit more time on it because it, it is an important factor and it's kind of comparison to uh, the grouping of something like in, a, in something like QuickBooks, if you're used to QuickBooks, where they use those sub accounts. And, and again, there's pros and cons to using the sub accounts. Here, basically, we can use this editing layout, which has more flexibility with the editing layout. Um, and it might be a little bit more confusing to, to figure out the reporting of it. Obviously, it's more confusing to do the reporting because you have more flexibility in the reporting, but uh, then you have more flexibility with it. And, the, and then the sub accounts, you have to worry about being able to set up the sub accounts properly and then unsubbing account or subbing account could get kind of messy after, after a while. So again, they both have their pros and cons. So in any case, our goal here then is to say, hey, I'd like to take these cost of goods sold numbers and I'd like to be able to group them into, into the subcategories, <clears throat> direct material, labor, and overhead, and then possibly even compress that further down to, to only having those, those subcategories. So let's consider this. We're gonna go to the edit layout. So we'll go into the edit layout down here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick all of the items and cost of goods sold that are gonna be under the direct labor, uh, the direct materials first, so the cement, uh, the tile, then we have the, there's nothing in cost of goods sold. This was given to us by the system. I'll just add that there too. There's no number in it. Uh, direct direct uh, depreciation is going to be overhead, direct labor, no. Direct materials, I'll pick that up. The dropped ceiling, I'm going to pick that up as materials. Flooring is materials. And notice I'm holding control, by the way, down to pick multiple items here. So I'm uh, adding them at the same time direct labor is, is labor, then indirect materials, that's gonna be overhead, marble is gonna be materials, overhead's gonna be an overhead, I wanna pick up the paint, wood stain, that's gonna be materials, the plaster, not the rent, because it's gonna be overhead, the staff, which is an artificial stone, we're gonna pick up, the stucco, we're gonna pick up, the surface finishing, we're gonna pick up, not the utilities, but the wall covering, we want that, and the wood finishing, we're gonna pick that up as well. So all these items, and, I, and again, I'm holding control down to, to pick those items up, are going to be included in materials. Therefore, I want a subcategory. I want to pick a subgroup. And so I'm going to go over here and say, I'd like to put those into a subgroup. And the subgroup is going to be called the direct uh, materials. Materials. Direct materials. And uh, there we have that. And so now you have that subcategory and it acts a lot like if I hit this little triangle, it acts a lot like a, a subgroup in like a, a QuickBooks type of software. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do I'm going to hit the little triangle so I can minimize it for now and then go into the, the next grouping, which is going to be the grouping for uh, labor. Let's go to the labor. So I got direct labor here and then I have uh, direct labor. Is there any other direct labor? I think that's it. We have one direct labor okay i'm going to add a group anyways because i want it to be in the same format of the grouping so i'm going to say i want to add a group even though there's only one item in it and i'm going to call it direct uh, labor and then i'm going to say tab so there we have that so then we have the direct labor and then i'm going to minimize that group for now and then everything else is going to go into overhead so i'm going to pick up the depreciation up top so here's the depreciation holding down control indirect labor indirect materials, overhead, rent for the jobs, utilities for the jobs, and all that is gonna go into overhead. So then I'm gonna group once again, I'm gonna put that into over, overhead, and then that'll be that group. So there we have it. And then if I could minimize the group here, just like you could see uh, the minimizing factor in something like a QuickBooks where you have the, the, the minimizing, but the minimizing is within the editing field. 
In other words, if I want to see all of them, I can untriangle them. I can open up the triangle to see the drop down. So there's the drop downs. So there we have those items. So that looks good. And then I would say done over here. I'm going to say that's done. So we'll save that item. And then if I scroll down, now we've got that grouping. We've got the cost of goods sold, and then the subcategory of the direct materials, total direct materials, then the overhead, total overhead, and the direct labor, and the total direct labor. So, and notice you have a little bit, bit more even flexibility here in that you can actually, you can actually adjust the, the which, which items come first on here. You notice it's not in alphabetical order, in other words, within the cost of goods sold necessarily i can i can re i can readjust these items which again it's a little bit more flexibility than you have in something like uh like quickbooks which has a set adjustments in other words within this category you'd have to adjust it by either uh account number or you could sort it by the amount over here or else it would be the default within the category of alphabetical order and here we can go and edit uh the, the page layout again and if I wanted to make adjustments within the categorization, I could I could do so. Like if I want cost to get sold up top, if I happen to have anything in there, I could put it up top. Or if I want the, the direct materials up top, I could put the direct materials on, on the top line, even though it's not in alphabetical order there. I can minimize I can minimize this, and if I want the direct labor category to be above overhead, which I do, I'm gonna pull that up there. Right, and then I can, so you have more flexibility to actually manipulate the reports in, in this type of fashion uh, with this system. Then if I wanted to collapse the columns, like you might see like a summarized type of report, I could do so here. Now I just, I just do it in this setting, and then I'm going to say, okay, uh, done. And then when we jump back over to the, to the report, it'll have them uh, collapsed. So then if I scroll down, we then have the collapsed report, kind of the summary type of report. So you still have that kind of collapsing and uncollapsing. It takes a little bit, like I say, a little bit more time for the editing uh, than, than with the sub accounts. But like I say, pros and cons of, of that format. Now then, once you have this set up, you could save this. So you could say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a custom report and call this basically a custom income statement. Custom income statement. <laughs> Spell it right here. And then make custom report by default. So I'm not going to make it the default one, right? You could, but I'm just going to make it a custom income statement. And then I'm going to say save. And that's one way that, that you can then not mess up the default income statement, which I wouldn't. I would keep the, the defaults for the system always there and then put the, put the customs in another location. Then if let's go ahead, if we go to the accounting dropdown and say, I want to go to my reports, we can then go to the custom reports here. And there's our custom report, and we can even put this little star button. And if you if you put that star on it, it'll show up in your in your main report. So you may want to use it as your as your primary income statement. Meaning you may put a star next to that one and remove the star next to this one and use it all the time. I would just always keep the default settings as as kind of the building block or the base report that I wouldn't change, even if I don't use it as my primary income statement. That's my just my opinion on it. And then, so then you can go back into here, and of course that will open up your, your custom report. And there you have it. And then you can do the adjustments on that. So like I say, I, the more I look at it, I, kinda, I really kind of like this to, in, a, in a lot of ways. It does give you a lot of flexibility within, within the report to do things that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise without like exporting it, right? There, some of these kind of formatting options are not, uh, are, they're not just kind of set built-in kind of options. You, can, you could go in there and, and do a little bit more on the report and you can add columns and stuff within within the report you know uh, in a bit different way a little bit more flexibility oftentimes so then i'm going to i'm going to right click on this tab up top let's right click on this tab up top and duplicate to this tab and then let's go back to the tab to the left and now let's take a look at our reports for the projects so i'm going to go to the accounting drop down and we're going to go down to uh, the reports here we want to take a look at our project report so I'm going to scroll down and once again we have our, our detailed report and the summary report. Let's first just take a look at the summary report. I'm going to go into the summary. We haven't spent as much time with, with the summary report. And notice you can check the, the, the items up top. You can take a look at all reports here and that'll pick them up. I would always keep this date as the end date and, and adjust the filters to adjust the date range. That's how I would think of it at this point. There's our job 16, 14, and 15. Then if I go back up top 
And I said, and, and notice if you're saying, hey, it's, it's, it's ordered in a funny way. Well, you can adjust the ordering of these reports, which is nice. I could adjust it by project. I could adjust it by cost, actual here, and then uh, the, the, unca the uninvoiced actuals. So this one actually had a total amount that was, was invoiced, which is the uh, 191, 140, because we actually invoiced out job number 14. That one's in essence going to be closed. So let's experiment with the status up top. If I go up top and, and I was to try to, uh, if I was to say, okay, I want to uncheck all of them and I just want to look at the in progress jobs and then update that report, you would think that 14 could be removed. How can we set the settings to remove that, that item? So let's take a look at closing that job and then we can use this filtering option. So I'm going to go back up top. I'm going to right click on this tab, duplicate this tab. I'm going to go back to the tab to the left we're going to go into the projects area. I went into all projects and then we want to go into job number 14. Job number 14. And now I'm going to change the status of the job by selecting the three little dots to the right hand side. And I'm going to check it off as closed. So I'm going to say this, this job is going to be closed. And then if I go back on over to the project summary report and we update this report, let's update this report. Now we see job number 15 and job number 16. So that's a great tool to be able to sort between the items that are open and closed. I'm going to go back up top and I want to show all jobs again. So if we go then into the all jobs and we scroll back down. Also note it's nice to have the date of it being closed as well. So that way we can see the jobs that were uh, that are open and we can also see the jobs that had closed in the current time period. Let's go up top and I'm going to go back to the prior tab and go back to the prior tab. I'm going to go to the accounting drop down and then go to the reports so that we can open the other report, which is going to be the detailed report. So if we scroll back down and we take a look at the project detail report, we have the similar formatting here where I could take a look at all the items again. I could say update and we could take a look at all jobs, whether they be open or closed. And then we've got our, our three jobs, 14, 15 and 16. And then we could do the same kind of toggling. I could toggle back and forth and say, I want to just take a look at the jobs that are in progress. So we can open up the in progress jobs. That'll filter it down to 15 and 16. Now note that we can here, we can use the date filter as well. If I, if I only want the information that's going to be in the current time period and uh, so that I could tie it out to the income statement, I could, I could take the jobs and I can uh, edit the report over here. We can edit the report. I'm going to add the date once again. That's going to be the date of the items that are in the in the detailed report. I'm going to be adding a filter. So we're going to add the filter and this time I'm going to add the date filter. So I'm going to add a date filter again. And this is for the activity that is happening. So now I just want to take the activity that's going to be in January. And I want to take that out uh, for just January is the only activity that we have. And so it's not going to include anything in the prior period. Update that. Now, if I update that and I only show the current the current jobs that are open, then notice it, it's not going to tie out here to the income statement. If I go back to the to the income statement to the right and scroll down, you, you would think it would be at that uh, 425, 518. Why? I'm going to go back to the projects tab to the left because I had projects that were closed. So really what I'd like to see then is I'd like to say, OK, I'd like to see all projects and I'm going to say update. And I want to consider the projects that had activity in the current time period as well. So notice job 14 had activity uh, in the current time period, and that'll be able to, to pick up that information. Now we're at the total of, um, what's the total over here? We had the 425, 518, and that's going to be the, actually that's not right. It should be, I'm back over to the income statement, the 674,000. So if I go back to the projects then, and scroll down we're at the 674 so there's the total of the 674 showing just the data the information that's happening in the current period so in order to do that you have to include the jobs that were open you know basically in the current period so so between these two reports between the information the data report that shows the activity where you could see the activity and and break it out by time period and the project summary report where you could see the total uh, costs for the job and compare that to, to, the, uh, to the amounts that have been invoiced and so on and so forth for the total job as well as see the close date. Between those two reports you have a, a lot of detail to, to work with and, and know exactly where you're at and work with that kind of uh, 
the the issues with that cutoff period and thinking about the jobs that are open in the prior period that were still open this period and the ones that started this period and when those items had uh, closed so that's going to be it for now let's get out of here